Okay, let's hop right into the deck profile and the name of the game for this particular deck is Cherix the Raging Isles. So it's a two mana blue blue legendary creature Leviathan Crab with 0 17 and it has the ability that whenever your opponent wants to target this card with any spell it costs two extra mana so making it just a little harder for our opponent to get rid of our huge crab. It does have an extra ability that in this deck is kind of like a side effect, but it could come in handy in some situations in which you can pay three mana to increase his attack and lower his toughness by the number of islands that you control. Um, but for the most part, we want, we want to make sure that we can keep his booty at 17 or preferably make it higher. And in this deck, we have a couple of ways of doing that, right? So. We do plan on using Cherix as the main attacker in this deck. So the two cards that we're gonna be using is Sentinel's Eyes and Solid Footing. So Solid Footing is essentially the key card to this entire deck. What Solid Footing does is that it gives our creature plus one, plus one, and if it has Vigilance, which we have a card in this deck that can give our Cherix Vigilance, is gonna make sure that we can use the toughness instead of the power when it comes to attacking or blocking. So what does that mean? It means that instead of using the zero, we can use the 17. With this one card, as long as the crab has vigilance, it becomes a 17-17. With solid footing equipped, it becomes an 18-18 when we go to attacker block, which is pretty nice. It's huge, actually. With one or two attacks, we can finish off any opponent. Unless it's a healing deck, but with two attacks, you know, that's a ton of damage. So Sentinel's Eye is the second card of the 1-2 combo. Um, it's another aura. It gives our crab plus one plus one, but it also gives it vigilance. So it makes sure that solid footing is live. And we can actually cast both of these cards in the same turn, seeing that uh, Cherix's Raging Isles is four mana. So as long as we have two planes and two islands, then we're set to go by turn five. And with these two cards, this makes our Cherix a 19-19 every time we go to attack, which is kind of a big deal, because if our opponent has any big spells to try to get rid of our Cherix, they're going to have to pay two extra mana. So that means that Murder becomes six mana. It means that Eliminate becomes five mana. Um, so yeah, we're forcing our opponent to use a ton of resources to try to kill our Cherix. Now, on top of that, if we couldn't make it even more broken by having a 1919 with Vigilance, we also have Staggering Insight that's going to give our crab an additional plus one, plus one, and lifelink. So now we have a 2020 with lifelink. So we're going to be healing every single turn for 20 damage. And if we manage to hit somebody with it, we're going to get the draw card. Um, in some cases, all you're going to get is the Cherix crap and the staggering insight, in which case you will use your passive pay the three mana to increase its power by whatever lands you have. So if you have two, then it becomes a three, three or a three 21 with staggering insight. Um, and then you'll be able to draw cards and then, you know, heal for three. And you can do this in order to draw into your Sentinel's eye or, or your solid footing. Um, we also have some other draw cards in the deck like Opt, Omen of the Seas, Thirst for Meaning, and this is really going to allow us to thin our deck and also scry the top cards of our deck to ensure that we draw the cards that we need to get the ball going. We also have Heliod's Pilgrim, which is a 1-2 creature for 3 mana, uh, 2 generic and a white, and this is going to let us search for our key components. So it's going to let us search for our Sentinel's Eyes, our Solid Footing, our Staggering Insights, or our Rusing Reeds, which actually we haven't even touched upon. Rusing Reeds, another aura that we have in the deck. It lets us draw two cards and then we have to discard a card, but it gives our Giant Crab plus one, plus one, and Flying. So with Rousing, if we were to have Rousing Reed, Staggering Insight, Solid Footing, and Sentinel's Eye, then our Cherix the Raging Isle essentially is a 21-21 with Flying, Vigilance, and Lifelink every single time it attacks with the extra ability to allow us to draw more cards. <laughs> so that's the name of the game. That's what we're trying to accomplish with this deck. Um, that being said, let's see if we can get our crab on and see what we can do.
And as you saw, the deck is called <laughs> Crab Jank. Crab Jank. It's a okay start. I just don't like that we only have two lands. This is a better start, but we're going to have to be hoping that we draw into our crab, which I mean, we have a high chance of doing that cuz Yeah, we have a high chance of doing that cuz we do play four of them. What was he? Hmm. Go ahead and play the island. Ooh, and he's playing black. So, we have to be careful because black has a ton of removal. And what I mean by a ton, I mean a ton. Nice thing is that we can kind of... We can kind of slug it out. With Season Hollow Blade, because if he tries to focus it to, to destroy it or anything like that. We'll let that go through. We can always um discard a card and then protect him. Okay. So let's do this. We're going to equip this on him. Make it him a 4-2. And then we'll equip this on him. Oh, right. We can't do that because, you know, we don't have the manas. But we can attack with him and I have to worry about him dying if he decides to block him with that 1-1 one, one chump. Which he's not going to. So we'll just do four and we'll get to draw a card. And we get to heal for four because Staggering Insight has lifelink or gives the monster lifelink at least. Now he can't target this because it doesn't have a power of two or less. So we kind of survive on that. We'll take the two. We definitely have the bandwidth for it. <laughs> okay. We'll go ahead and drop this. And we're going to go ahead and equip this on him. This is going to make him a 5-3 and now has Vigilance. Let's get this. Take the action. And we are going to search for... This right here. I just kind of wish that this was the crab, but I mean, it is what it is. If we're not getting the crab, Season Hollow Blade is our round two. Or not our round two, but like our second win con. What you gonna do? Of course, the card that I wanted to get. But that's okay. The one nice thing that Season Hollow Blade, like I said, does have is that we can discard any card. Exile target creature. That creature's controller reveals the top card of their library and then reveals... Da -da -da. Okay, that's fine. We can't cancel it anyway. Okay, so we are essentially searching for... I need another thing of flying. So this is essentially at a standstill because obviously he doesn't want to, uh, if he swings, I'm just going to hit him for five. So we're not going to attack and we're just going to wait and see what he's going to do. I don't think we have anything important in the, yeah. We do need a second one of these though. Or gain control of target creature until the end of the phase. On top that creature, it gains haste. Add any two colors. Okay. So he's just going to try to do as much damage as he can. Does this have trample? Of course it is. So he's going to heal for five. I'm going to take 17. I'm 
Well, mine doesn't have trample, so I could just take 11. He's tapped out, so he can't even, like, do anything to kill him off. Like, he had a shock or something, he couldn't do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take as much advantage of this one guy that we can, because we got not much going on for us. He's obviously gonna block with the one one, but we're gonna heal for for six. We get to survive for another turn. So that kind of puts his Rex at like a pause. Exile target card. Oh, it's the same thing from earlier. Okay. <laughs> we got our dude. He gave us our dude. That's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. So now all we need to do is get that exact same setup just on our Cherix, which fate is smiling upon us because we can cast Sentinel with the escape cost. So now it's a one eight. And because of Sentinel, since it has vigilance, this now becomes in a 1919. Sure, let's summon this. Go ahead. You're gonna take 19? Oh, okay, cool. Take the 19. <laughs> he had no cards in his hand. And he had the 11 11. Doesn't have death touch, so it was gonna die anyway. So he kind of shot himself in the foot because I was kind of waiting to get that crab and I wasn't drawing it. So, I was either going to beat him with that seasoned hollowed bladesman because he wasn't going to be able to kill it because I could just keep discarding cards. Or, he was going to have to do, I don't know what he was going to have to do, but he just gave us the win. Crab jank, crab jank, that's what we want to do, crab jank. I don't have any creatures. We're gonna have to mulligan this hand because uh I mean sure. Okay. So we'll draw this. So, yeah. So we have some monsters. I'm in desperate need of searching for that crab because this could get bad really fast. So we're on the search. Um, I do need a land though. So next turn we can still play the land. So I guess what we'll do next turn is we'll play Season Hollow Bladesman. Or the Season Hollow Blade. I don't know why I keep saying man. And the Sentinel Eye. Okay, so drop this. Now, we do have to be careful. I keep forgetting that we can't play that because we don't have enough white. We have to be careful because... Every time he draws a card, he's going to keep adding counters to this thing. And once it gets eight, he's going to make an eight, eight Kraken. Now, if we manage to draw into our big crack, Kraken, crap, the big crab dude. If we draw the crab dude, we're fine. We drew the big crab dude. So we are fine. He can have his, um, he can have his eight, eights. What makes me uncomfortable is that he has untapped mana. Uh, but let's do this. Let's see what happens. 
Is he gonna do the non-creatures full cancel? No? Okay. Unsummon. Did he just get unlucky and not get a land? For the last like two turns? See, that's why you never keep a hand that only has two lands. That's why you mulligan until you get at least three lands. We are in prime position. Is he gonna cancel this? Please do, please do, cancel it. I could just recast it for the escape cost. <laughs> okay. I don't think he has any idea of what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna like slowly just start chipping him away with this dude. Brazen Borrower, sure. Because I know his strategy. His whole strategy is just to delay until he's able to get these 8-8s. Uh, eight but I guess he just... He wasn't drawing the lands. He had no lands. So even that Brazen Borrower, for example, he couldn't play it because he needs at least two blue mana and a white generic to be able to play it, and he couldn't. So yeah. Next turn, we were going to cast a solid footing. Make our crab a 19-19 and swing in for game. He was at 17. He only he all he had was the rune crab, so he was gonna lose that. And even if he gets the kraken, my Leviathan Kraken has vigilance. And if we got another plane, we could even give him lifelink. And then I'm healing for 20 or 19 every single turn. I don't know. When? Sorry if you see me in a different clothing. I didn't have enough time to record all the games in the same day. So we're just recording the next match uh, the next day. No biggie. Noro Mimi. Let's see what happens. Let's see if our crab can take the win. Uh, we're gonna keep this. We have some ways of drawing. So what we can do is we can play the opt on the first turn. Ominous Seas on the second one. Hmm. This kind of change. Okay, we'll do this. And then we will... Yeah, we can draw it. It'll give us the opportunity to draw more cards. Hmm. Oh, we'll discard this. And we have our crab. Unless he continuously starts to cast that dude from the escape. Uh-huh. Well, we do have the crab, but I don't, uh, we'll discard the opt. Oh, that's nice. Because essentially now when he forces us to discard, we can discard the sentinel. So we'll go ahead and play this. Let's go ahead and uh, scry and draw some more cards. Beautiful. Okay. Let's see what he does to it. I mean, he could uh, murder. Or he could drop a fifth land and then uh, Blood Chief.
but he's not killing it with straight up damage. <laughs> this crap's got a big booty. But he's definitely planning something because he keeps targeting it. And he has the means to do it because he's playing uh, red block. So lots of destruction in this deck. But maybe he doesn't have the answers just yet. So let's see. Swing for 19. Main phase 2. That was a big hit. I'm really curious to see what he's going to do. Because he hasn't really played much. Except for those two titans to force me to discard cards. Unless. Unless like his goal is to just force me to keep discarding cards. We have gone up against like that. But he's going to have to find a way to deal with this crab. Because if he doesn't. It's game. <laughs> He just killed himself. <laughs> yeah, so that card that he played, when he plays it, it halves everyone's, uh, it halves everyone's health, and they only had one. So, I don't know. I think in this video, we have caused everybody to scoop. But we almost one-shot him. So, I don't know. Ooh, Nisa. I like Nisa. Funny enough, Nisa, I think, was the first plane walker that I ever owned. Now, I'll be honest. I really like the cards in this hand. I don't like the fact that we only have two lands because we're going to be struggling for land later on. But I'm hoping that with the draw cards that we have, we can kind of get some more land. So we're going to keep it. Blue, red. All right. So we're going to play the Temple of Enlightenment. And... Well, if he's playing blue, red, he's either playing Wizards or he's playing Scry. Not Scry. Uh, he's playing um that Elemental Bird. You know which one I'm talking about. The one that, like, gets an extra bit of damage because uh, they casted spells. And he's probably playing stuff with Prowess. So we'll keep it for now. Um, let's drop Ominous Seas and see if we can scry another land. Oh, fantastic. We're actually going to keep both. Because then on the next turn, we'll draw into the stable footing or the solid footing, I should say. And then we can opt to try to find another land. But this is good because we literally have the crab. So we have the crab and then we have all of like our stuff. Yeah, we have every single We have every single equip spell or aura that we could put on the crab. We just need some more land. Well, this confounding conundrum is not going to affect us because we can't drop multiple lands in a turn. So whatever. Oh, look at what he's playing. Very interesting indeed. Let's give him a nice. <laughs> but he's playing a, a, a way com completely different build because his is blue red. So I'm very curious to see what he's going to put onto his crab or what he's going to do unless he just has it here like a like a wall. Because on our turn, we're about to go off. So, we're about to give this crab. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna pop off. Okay, so, we're gonna give the eyes here.
And now we're going to give him solid footing. So now he's a 19-19 when we attack. Um, and we're going to go ahead and give him flying. And draw two cards. Uh, we can discard the land. And so what we're going to do now is just attack. He can't block because he doesn't have flying. And he's down to one. Now, what's awesome is that it has Vigilance, so even if he does want to attack or do anything, he's going to have to get over this crab. And with Staggering Insight, we can give it Lifelink, so it becomes a 21-21 with Lifelink. We're going to be healing for 21 every single turn. And yeah, we're going to be able to win this, I think. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go to Nopt. And we can actually start now trying to set up a second crab. Okay. It just put me into the... Very cool. Well, we're at 41 now. That was a weird error that just like popped up, but whatever. And he scoops. <laughs> yeah, we out crabbed the crab. I don't know what was the purpose of him having the crab. He didn't really do anything unless like his whole thing was just it was a 017. And so unless we had like flying or whatever, we weren't going to be able to block. But our crab was far superior. But yeah, can y'all believe this is $14? <laughs> hey guys, thank you so, so much for sticking it through all the way to the end of the video. If you guys like the deck, please leave a comment down below and let me know. If you guys decided to build the deck on your own and put it into MTG Arena, please also drop a comment down below and let me know how well you guys are doing with your deck. If you guys are enjoying the Gathering on a Budget series here on our channel, I'd recommend subscribing for more Magic the Gathering content. And with that being said, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.